Thank you for tuning in to Ungentrified with Kent Johnson. Ungentrified takes an unfiltered view on pop culture, music, television and film, politics, current events, and topics central to the worldwide Black community. Ungentrified is a safe audio space for celebrating Black culture in its purest form. Thank you for joining another episode of Ungentrified. It's your boy, of course, Kent Johnson. And I got a fool with me today. And I'm so glad that she was able to to come through and, and hang out with us and, and chop it up for a little bit. But before I get into who that is, you guys know that I ask everybody that comes on the show what's on their radar at the moment. So what's your favorite jam? What's your favorite food? What's your favorite book? What's your thing at the moment right now? What's on your radar? Okay, well, hi, everybody. This is Colleen Smith. <laughs> What's on my radar at the moment these days is that Blue Dream. Mm-hmm. I'm on that Blue Dream. Mm-hmm. And I've been listening to Shirley Horn lately. Sh- Shirley Horn. That's... Shirley Horn. She's a jazz musician, yes. singer. Who and right now the song that has been appealing to me is "Here's to Life." Right now I've been getting immersing myself into music, into like instruments. I'm coming from the apocalyptic streets right now, so right now what I want to hear is I want to hear things that resonate to be real, things that resonate to be sincere, and things that are melodically seducing me to a place of excitement happiness and rolling up a blue dream what <laughs> uh you guys probably heard who it was because she told you it's kalita smith kalita 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 smith and you guys <laughs> if you had your eyes open for 15 seconds during the 90s you know exactly who she is she of course Ooh, the 1900s you better watch your mouth <laughs> you better watch your mouth <laughs> hey. be your auntie i can be your auntie these, these are golden years for for many of us but uh <laughs> the 90s are a special time and of course it like i said if you had your eyes open for a couple of seconds you know that kalita smith was the wonderful Wanda McCullough on the Bernie Mac show. Uh, of course, and she won a BET Comedy Award for that, uh, for Outstanding Lead yeah. Actress. And the show itself was a Peabody and Emmy Award winning comedy. So shout out to the Bernie Mac show. And an Emmy. Yes. And, and an, an Emmy. Emmy. Yeah, get, Watch out now. Watch out right, now. Right. Uh, highlight every rose. <laughs> get all of your flowers. That's, that's right. Um, but of course, she was on every uh, 90s black sitcom there was everything from 1900 <laughs> in the 1900s and now, now, look now you're making me feel old now you know you're younger than me so you can't be out here I mean, making it me sound feel better old. than 90s you make it sound like i'm a throwback jersey <laughs> <laughs> i'm like we should go find this jersey i had it when i was three <laughs> now, okay go ahead oh uh, okay. but no funny enough so saturday this saturday i'm actually this is what's on my radar at the moment texas so uh-oh I'm headed to... Oh, oh hang up, please. <laughs> please. Honey, that's for the rest of your life. Uh, it is, it's for good reason. I'm for headed... the rest of your life. They're not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm headed to San Antonio for my niece's Sweet 16, and oh. the theme of the party is 90s. It's a 90s party, so... Uh, <laughs> you should go as Bernie Mac. Go, do it. <laughs> well, look, I was running around all day looking for... Like a old school, like Tommy Hilfiger jacket, or like a polo or Nautica jacket, and I found one. So I'm hyped. I found one. It took me. Hey, what you go to Goodwill? Where'd yeah, you go? Where'd you find that? Yeah, Goodwill. It took me three Goodwills uh, to find one. I bet. I bet. Because <laughs> first I went. I, Look, went to... I said I was gonna bring Fila back. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for it to happen. I'm surprised it hasn't happened yet. But I found a I found a fly little '90s Tommy Hilfiger jacket. I'm busting out my Tims. And I'm gonna be killing it at it. this party. So I hope I'm I not the it. the only adult that has gotten into the theme. 
because I'm gonna be the cool uncle. You want to go back? You right. want to go back? <laughs> right. uh, so I'm hype about that. So and it'll be my first time actually going to anywhere in Texas. I've, I've always flown through, but never stopped and and chill for a minute. So I'll be there this weekend. That's, oh really? Yeah. Okay. So if you have any suggestions on San Antonio, I don't know if uh, anybody does. But... Riverwalk. That's all they got. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say I, I don't know. That's if... why everybody at the Spurs game because that's all they got. That's all they got. Okay. The everybody that tells at the Spurs game, whether they're a Spurs fan or not, <laughs> they that's all they got is Riverwalk. <laughs> now, um, actually, San Antonio is beautiful, and actually, for me, I think Native American people are the most prettiest people to me. I, to me, they're like just the complexion and just the smoothness of their creaminess of their skin tone. Like they're just beautiful. They're beautiful people. So if anything, you might come back with a girlfriend. <laughs> watch out, now. hey. And watch or, out. or or and or have somebody challenge me because you know black people love to say they got Native American in their family. So this would be the chance. Somebody like stop lying. <laughs> First of all, call me out. this one brother told me he had slew foot. I said, wait a minute, that's not Indian food. That's a condition. Right. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, I need you to knock it off with everybody trying to have, like they didn't spit in a cup and send a, a cotton swab. Stop it. <laughs> oh, look, I, I did not bring Kalita here to cut up with me <laughs> this whole episode. I did bring Sorry, her here. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I brought her here for a reason, uh, but uh, no, 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 you are fine. <laughs> um, so, outside of what we know Kalita for in the 1900s, as she likes to call it, uh, she's she's just as busy now. You you stay booked and busy. I don't. I was like, um, wait a minute. I know that she's on in the cut, but she's also on, on Z Nation too. I was like, what? When do you get a break? And and you told me you don't. You know, <laughs> that's my Jamaican side in me coming true. I didn't even know I was Jamaican. <laughs> 93 jobs here. I uh, know. Um, you know, I this this is what I say to um, when I speak to young women and I speak to uh, women who are getting their lives back together, whether it's from rehab or homelessness or whatever it is, the whole thing that helps me because I'm no different than nobody else. I'm not even a check away from you. Actually, I am a choice away from being in a place where I can spiral anywhere. I mean, as African Americans or as even women in this country, there's enough for you to focus on to to allow you to just give up. But in the plight of not giving up, the whole point is to be able to connect to something that feeds you. And for me, in my 20s, I never knew passion was such an exhilarating feeling. When I connected to acting, I found a feeling that no one could have ever given me. It's a self-discovery, and it was passion. And ever since then, I've been rolling. And when you get when you get sensationalized with an inspiration and passion, you don't even realize you ain't taking a break. I hear that. Until until your sacrodiliac hurt <laughs> or your paycheck late. Then you be like, wait a minute, I'm working. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. What, what, what happened to the, the... My paycheck late. <laughs> right. <laughs> wait a minute, hold up, passion. Passion. <laughs> wait a minute, passion. <laughs> right. I'm sorry. We're going to spell the... Ch- I'm sorry, you misspelled that check. It's called P-A-S-S. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Well, I'm, I'm glad you actually opened us up with that because... Uh, as I mentioned, you are on Z Nation, which is on Sci-Fi, and you play the ever dope Lieutenant Roberta Warren. And that you're in season five now, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, awesome. And and what many people may not know is that you are the first African American lead actor on that network, male or female, just period. You the first one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm the first lead. Michelle Nichols definitely was the first um, African-American female on that network. But I'm the first lead. And it, it let me just tell you, I didn't, I didn't take the job thinking of any of that. That was the light of God because I just absolutely was trying to pay rent, let's be honest. <laughs> and, um, um, you know, and it, the, the material, uh, I responded to the material to the point where I couldn't believe someone wrote this for a female. And... 
this was five years ago, so this is right when Scandal was kicking off, right when, like, all my female comrades that I would see on auditions, like Carrie Washington, Taraji, uh, Empire kicked off for her. Also, Gabrielle Union was on um, Being Mary Jane. Mm-hmm. Um, you also had, um, I'm, I've never auditioned with Viola Davis, but I would love to just put myself in that conversation. Ooh, <laughs> wait a minute, pause. <laughs> and, you know, and, and myself on Sci-Fi, and then you have Niecy Nash on um, TNT. So you having, at that time, five years ago, actually when Obama was president, you start to have things that started to just be a little more into something a little bit more exhilarating because it's a different choice. You know, television has always patterned itself in a certain way. Right. And so, you know, with today's, with what I appreciate, this is what I said, and I said this even though I was pissed at a party, and I said, you know what? Racism is got to die because technology moves too fast. <laughs> First of all, technology is not waiting for stupid people. Right. You got to be smart. You got to be focused on technology. You can't focus on somebody's difference and make that your plight of ignorance. Time is changing, and it's not waiting for anyone, and thank God. Thank God. Are you kidding me? Like, I have to, I bow down to the Esther Rawls. I bow down to the the Diane Carrolls. I bow down to the women of television, the Felicia Rashad, because television is morphing into a space to where we're welcome now. Yeah. It's fantastic. People are having to catch up to it because they're not okay. Everybody's not okay. Right. Because it's new. But the great thing... And to, to put it in perspective, so sci-fi has been on TV for 26 years now. 26 Dude. years. It, it wasn't originally it's called playing. sci-fi. It was, you know, it's gone through a couple of things. But the, Science fiction yeah. channel. Yes. <laughs> it was long. Yeah. <laughs> but 26 mm-hmm. years. And, and then here you come uh, as, you know, lead actor on Z No, Nation. here comes Carl Schaefer. Let me give it real credit. Oh. The real credit goes to the individual who wrote a character and did not specify it as a gender specificity. Yeah, I was curious about he that. Wrote, so did they write? Did they write? And I had to ask. I had to ask. I said, first of all, let me say something because if you really wrote a black woman in the apocalypse of the streets, you should have given her a press and con. I've been great. <laughs> he wrote an individual. He wrote individuals that would be in circumstances. Because I had to ask him, where where are you when you think of these things? Where are you when you think of these ideas, these stories? Because I'm always fascinated to the mind of the person that can really go into a venture and then bring us out of story. Like, are you kidding? I said, are you smoking weed? Like, really? So I don't want to hit that kind of weed because I'm going to a little deep. But he was like, he started laughing. He was like, no. I was like, it's it fascinating to me with like musicians. When musicians sit by themselves and all of a sudden they cringe. Have you ever seen Marvin Gaye? video where he does the whole I want you song and he tells each instrument how he wants it to sound. Oh my God. Those, I'm sorry, those people are absolutely stunning to me. So my showrunner is pretty much that kind of dude. And the wonderful thing was he wrote an individual and he didn't see it gender specific. He saw what would this person do in this per- in this particular situation. And the great thing is he's allowed me to play somebody I ain't even re- in real life. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oops, because if, if, the, if the apocalypse was to break out right now, I'm out of here. I'm not doing it. Uh, <laughs> you just, wait, wait, I don't think you get the clock out <laughs> on life. Look, bro, I'm going to give it 10 minutes. I'm going to give it 10 minutes to make sure it's real. I'm out of here. I'm not doing it. <laughs> Ain't no Popeyes, ain't no bathtub. I mean, I couldn't even be in a gang because they, you fight every day. I'd be like, oh, we want to go to the library and just, I don't know, look at a book. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly, you are not who anybody wants on a squad when when things get real in the apocalypse oh, <laughs> in real life. <laughs> honey, I'd be like, look, I make the fish when y'all come back and be ready. <laughs> go get them. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. Go team. <laughs> <laughs> when you when you found out that you got the role, did they tell you then that you were going to be the first African American lead actor, or when did you no, find out? No, and they didn't even know that either. Um, actually, I found that out because I'm, I'm such a big fan of Michelle Nichols, and I knew 
that Lucille Ball was the individual that actually procured and made sure that Star Trek um, got their three seasons. Mm-hmm. They only had three seasons, and they have been famous for decades. Right. And when I got on the network, I started to just kind of see how can I sit here? How can I really, you know, live in this space? Because as an actor, you want to you wanna find a, a niche. You want to find a place where you kind of, you can like, you know, make a living and enjoy it. Mm-hmm. You don't want to be in a space where you are hustling and bustling. And that's not what creativity is about. Creativity is about breathing the art that really comes and inspired by you, period. And if you can't have that in any of the things you participate in, then that's hard work. And why are you doing that? And, and so and most of us don't ever question, get to, to get to that point either. Well, and it takes a minute, you know, because we are culturally, we are not, we're not bred to enjoy. We're bred to strive. We're bred to achieve. We're bred to accomplish. We're bred to compete. We're bred to measure. That's what we're bred to do. When really, at this point in my life right now, I'll be 50 in January, it is really about enjoying what it is you have around you and being okay with it because there's nothing wrong with you. Uh, Kalita, where's your where's your church at? I'm, I'm about to join your church because you was just giving yeah. us a, a word. <laughs> Let me know where I need to be at on Sunday. <laughs> uh, it's so sweet. No, and I mean it. I mean it. I mean it. You know, and I mean it because I was I was governed under a whole bunch of different philosophies too, which makes you confused and you get to running around. That's why you get people who go to college and they be lawyers and all of a sudden they come out and they be like, fuck this, I just wanna make macrame swans for Gladstone's restaurant. You be like, I'm sorry, you have a law degree <laughs> <laughs> But if you're not enjoying it, it's not worth it. Yeah. It ain't. It's only going to poison you. And that is not what God's intention is for our lives, period. I don't care what anybody has ever told you. If it don't feel good, shake the, shake the joint. Shake it. Yeah. And, and it's funny you use the example of law school because that was me. I'm an, I'm an attorney. Uh-huh. And I, and no, 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 no. I'm sorry. You gave, but you gave <laughs> the perfect example. And, and when, I, when I meet people and people ask me what I do, I always tell them, like, I'm an attorney on the side. It's my side hustle. It's not – it's what I do to – Pay bills. Are you gonna turn on side? Ooh, I'm gonna see my niece ten days. Wait a minute. <laughs> but it, Ooh, I know we are. I know we on the interview. But wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> well, yeah, it was like you know when I started law school, I was like, oh, I'm gonna save the world. I'm doing this and the third. And by the end of it, I was like, I don't want to do this. I, at least, well, Wait. I don't want to do it, and it it be the thing I have to do to to make it in. No, the world. you don't want to do it, and it doesn't bring you joy too. Right. Right? right, we are meant to we are meant to be here for one another. But if it hurts you to do that, does, does that make sense? Exactly. No. And I think what we have to do we're we're in a beautiful generation where we can actually take pause. Which is, I'm going through menopause, and I realize it don't mean men on pause. It means I need to take a minute and <laughs> shut up before I talk. That's what it means. <laughs> I get it. That's why now I be like. Um, like you, if somebody sees me on the freeway and I'm humming, please don't honk. Just <laughs> let me hum. <laughs> so, so it's menopause is. Mm, nah, let me pause for a second. <laughs> mm, let me in a minute and pause before I read something. because <laughs> I might rock your world with this information. <laughs> but, but you know, I think I think that's the beautiful thing about this time and this generation because now we're morphing into one another. The most beautiful thing in its in its tragic uh, experience, having Trump as president made us all one nation for real. We all about we're nervous. It's everybody. I don't care what color you <laughs> you wake up just a little nervous. <laughs> no, you're, you're all the same. Yeah, yeah. So okay, take me back to season yeah. one. Did you feel okay. a burden knowing that or figuring out that you were the first uh, lead actor for the I didn't know it then. I didn't even know it then. Yeah. Oh, so you didn't know it then. Season one. No. Season one, 
I was just trying to figure out how to kill a zombie. I, I'm new to the whole genre. Let's take away from the others. I'm not even going to front. I was intrigued by this whole, this whole, you know, this whole genre is amazing. If I could say, and I'm a football fan, for real, for real, there's no fans like these, like this horror fan. This whole underground, it's, it's almost like an underground situation. When I first went to my first Comic-Con, I couldn't believe how loyal these people are. Oh, yeah, it's a whole new world. Oh, my God. It's fantastic. I was like, I said, oh, I've been wondering forever. I've never had a daddy. This is great. <laughs> 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 and... I have to, I, I got it. Every time I, I can give a shout out to them fans, it's for real. They are more fantastic than a football fan. And football fans are serious. Cause when I tell you, don't you get a, don't you get a football fan on a Sunday with a jersey on and he's at the game before the team, you better leave him alone. Leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> don't you mess with him. He's not playing. <laughs> but my point uh, I'm making is that um, all of this was, ever so new and I ended up discovering you know the plight of being in that position of what in my humbleness where I realized I'm I'm carrying people I'm on the shoulders of other people and now I know that there are people on my shoulders Mm -hmm. so for me to even voice this to be that to be that position is for me to allow others that are coming after me to realize there's someone before me and you that tried this too. Yeah. Do you do you think that black women have solid representation in, in science fiction? Do you feel like there's some space? No. We don't have solid representation in life, period. I, hey. They picked on Michelle <laughs> Obama because she showed her fucking arms. Are you kidding me? That's attached to her body. Right. And then even now, with her, her books. Her... And then you pick a president whose wife is willing to show everything below her arms. <laughs> Please, get out of here with this. Uh, My point I'm saying, there is a cultural shift that is no undoubtedly happening because we as black women, we're over it. And we're not, we're not fighting. We're not knocking down doors. We're not doing any of that. All we're doing is politely ringing the doorbell. And if the doors are locked, we're going to open it. Mm-hmm. That's what's happening. <laughs> so do you feel like Hollywood is better now for black actresses than maybe when you started? Is there a difference? You know, Kent, I try not to go there. Because if I go there, that create more of that. Oh. What I've decided to do is realize that as an artist and a creative entity who's called creating, I belong here. Period. I just got to figure it out. And I can't get caught up in the prowesses that came before me. I'm a I'm a creative entity and I belong. So I'm not gonna bump my head be confused. How do I really belong here? I'm gonna enjoy the fact that I'm gonna figure it out. But but that's what that's what black women do anyway. <laughs> that's that's just of of, then, of your nature and of we, your. We usually don't have power. a calmer conversation than that. Usually the conversation goes like this: "What the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> this is a long shit, and you know what? I'm bringing cameras. Let me see what I'm gonna do to him. Okay, let me call these people. Yeah, it's all of that when you're in your home, but when you get to sit down and you get a breath." then you must really connect to the fact that we are on, we're here on purpose. I don't want to ever, anytime I see anybody's eyes and look in a disposition of less than gratitude or less than appreciated, I, especially in women and children, I make sure I look them in the eye and let them know they matter. You matter matter you're on purpose you would be here if you weren't now just figure it out forget what happened i know it was tragic please stand in line and it will play itself out for you later in order to be able to gain or have an advantage about it but don't let it paralyze you in moving forward and that's what happens to us with people of any color because we're not really um 
ingratiated in healing. We have it innately, but no one's really taught us how to really understand. Heal yourself from that bullshit. Forget that. Yeah, it happened. It's a story. But don't let it cripple you. It's too vast. Things are too fantastic. Look what's going on. Oh, my God. I'm from the 1900s. <laughs> Look, I ride around for a phone booth because I just, I, I want to remember. <laughs> it's like a Smithsonian. It's like, where can I find a phone booth just to connect to the 70s? <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait a minute. The phone booth wasn't that long ago. I... I was just saying, but no, please. I look. I had my niece in the car. We drove by a, a phone booth that didn't have a receiver. She thought it was a kiosk. So listen, <laughs> I'm saying I get it, I get it. But in getting it, what I marvel at is look how far this has come. Yeah. Like look how far life it jumps, and to be so caught up in the little minuscule things of what the difference is, somebody who can't change themselves. That's stupid. That's just utterly stupid. We're supposed to enjoy the difference. We're not supposed to be sitting here sparring about your differences. I can't change the color of my skin. It's not a pair of Levi's. I didn't pick this. <laughs> you know, move on. Let's go. Let's, let's, let's enjoy this. Let's enjoy what's happening. So I'm enjoying, that's your question, I'm enjoying all of what this ride is. And this is what I say on panels often. often. I didn't pick this job because I saw an end. I picked this job for the adventure. The adventure has been fantastic. It's been more than I could even expect it. I'm coming from comedy, and now I'm moving into a, a genre of life preserving of what it means to be in wellness of anything that's traumatic. Yeah. And that's not a color. That's not a color, and that's not a gender. Right, and that's something I think everybody can resonate with. Yeah. Is, is being in a space where you don't know what's going to happen. You have to constantly be yeah. in figure-out mode. So, as we mentioned, you are a busy, busy woman. So you play Roberta on Z Nation, but you also play Cheryl on In the Cut. How, yeah. how do you turn off roberta and turn on cheryl like do you have to have a break in between the close. two are they are they close to each close. other close yeah. the clothes will do it oh you said the clothes will do the it clothes, that's it the clothes will do it when i tell you when they put me in that distress stuff for the apocalypse it's clear where i'm at <laughs> <laughs> when i got it copy you okay we're fighting great <laughs> let's do it so you don't ever you don't ever be on the set of in the cut and be like well you know roberta would Knock a knock a somebody out with this curling iron real quick if she had to like if if it came down to it. No, <laughs> no, the worlds are so different, and the production participation is different. Yeah, I am new to this sci-fi world, so people are catching up to being okay with rooting for my character. Because mm-hmm. this is not a genre that is. Um, ethnically strong. Right. And so I'm a face that's a little different. But what they're learning to understand is erase what you see in my face. Go for my character. Go for the script. Go for who would you who would you need if you were in this situation? Because if we were in war, I wouldn't be looking at your skin color. I'd be looking at your attitude and what you can do. And if you're going to be a problem, I'm going to shoot you in this fox hole and I will leave you and take your bullet. That's what I would do. I wouldn't even care about your color. <laughs> Are you good at this? Because if you're not, you're staying. <laughs> right. At that point, yeah. the only color I'm worried about is, Are you gray because you're dead? Okay, you're not. All right, we cool. Okay. <laughs> Period. Look, because when it comes down to that, that's what it's about. And really, that is a wonderful lesson about life. Forget the old customs of all that other stuff. Who makes you feel? Who who makes you feel victorious? Who makes you feel like conquering? Do we pick Michael Jordan because he's a black man? No, we pick Michael Jordan because he defies what we all will do. He had the flu. Most people with the flu is in the bed. This fool is throwing 40 points. <laughs> <laughs> My point is we don't love him because of what he looked like. We love him and what he can do and what he defies. Right. Period. Right. So, 
Speaking of things that people do, what, if anything, has changed about you since you started Z Nation? <laughs> My hair. I'm not lying. <laughs> I'm like, um, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> um, I realized that uh, I don't want to do the apocalypse. <laughs> oh, that that, that, that made happens. it clear. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it never happens. Oh my God. If that is the truth, oh, please. That would be horrible. That's what I learned. I hope that we are a smart enough consciousness as a group of people that we do not inflict such an injustice that we spiral mankind into a space of such malice and, and and uncertainty. Like, oh God, if anything, I hope that never happens. That's what, yeah, that's what I learned. Yeah. I mean, I already knew I didn't like mosquitoes or the woods and I ain't a camper. I don't do that. As a matter of fact, usually when they yell cut, I be like, and we're in the woods, is somebody going to come get me out of this? Because <laughs> I'm not going to walk back. <laughs> So inner city, I am. I'm an inner city princess. <laughs> Watch your mouth. <laughs> so when you're not in a forest saving the world and you're not at a salon, what are you doing? What are you doing in your off time? What's Kalita doing when she's chilling? I'm in a onesie, pajama onesie. It's storming outside. Um, my niece is here. I just gave a surprise birthday party for my brother. It was fantastic. He hadn't seen his cousin in like, 10, some years, and oh, wow. um, some family, um, childhood friends he hadn't seen in 20 something years, and I did a whole little casino thing and all that. And so, really, what I'm doing is recovering and drinking the rest of the liquor. So, let's be honest. <laughs> and you're, you're, on a, you're on break for the year, right? You don't have to worry about killing zombies um, yeah. for Christmas and nothing like that, right? We're done. We are on the air. I think our last episode airs December 20 something. Okay. Eighth, maybe. Um, the tenth episode airs this Friday. I'm just enjoying watching what we do because we move so fast. Um, it's easy to forget what you shot. Yeah. And so some of the things and watching the stuff come together, like part of my enjoyment, I, I will say my little side fetish that I do is I like to watch the show by myself. <laughs> and just to kinda just see what what came to life and what worked and what doesn't work. I mean, as a creative entity, you're always um, unfolding. You're always um, seeing what it is you really do have because there is never there, you know? And for me, this is a genre I tapped into, but this isn't unnew to the dramatic stuff that I've been acclaimed for on stage. And this is, a, this is it's time for me to start to show my levels and my range yeah. because it's more to me than just being somebody's, um, set up chicks for a joke. Right, right. Yeah, and in sci-fi, comedy is always an underlying tone, but, you know. So, but I don't get it. I don't get the joke, yeah. which is funny. So, and I'm going to tell you this, and I told one other interviewer that I am going to um, start to adhere to the thing that Bernie was kind of preparing me for in his stand-up. Yeah. yeah how, how, how much of the show is ad-lib? Like, do you get to ad-lib at all? Ad lib for what? Z Nation? Yeah, for Z Nation. Oh, we ain't got time to ad lib. You better learn. You better know what you're saying. Let's go. But but stand I'm up. I'm sorry. <laughs> we are shooting at 5 a.m. We need to go. Right. I'm sorry. We not. I'm sorry. We play. No, there's no joke. It's so funny. People say. So what are the practical jokes? Um, we have time for that. No, we don't. <laughs> See, so people people <laughs> we assume. Time for that, darling. <laughs> I'm sorry, Derek. That's the Ocean's Eleven, honey. <laughs> that's the mis- That's the multi-million dollar budget. We don't have time for that. We must go. Right. <laughs> Daylight. <laughs> yeah, I think people would assume that that set is like a playground for the most part. But no, you guys are. No. You got to cut. No. You keep it moving. We got to be careful. Yeah, we and we got to be careful because a lot of the action that we're doing, we're dealing with wonderful fans who happen to live in the town who want to play, uh, you know, the zombie or who wants to play, you know. So for us as cast members, we're aware of that. And being aware of that, we don't want to hurt them. Right. You know, we're, 
we're we're grateful to them because if we were in LA, do you know how much money it would cost for them to be working with us? Please, we'd be on strike. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> and they do it because they just love the fact that we're there. Yeah. 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 Well, that's dope. And so we take we take you know we take our time when it comes to certain things like that because what we do know is that. The, the action is everything. Yeah. And for me, the action is the fun part. It's the fun part. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, but Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. So you, you mentioned stunts. And I do my own stunts. I, Wait a minute. You I do, do your own stunts? stunts? I, yeah. I mean, I have a girl who, when, when they get, and they feel like, okay, if she die right now, well, we got to send more episodes and... <laughs> We're going to need to finish stuff. So let's bring this girl in right here. We're just going to hang her right here. <laughs> you know, that's stuff like that. But when it comes to, you know, um, actually doing the action scenes or choreographing certain things in order to, you know, to make the camera angles work right here, that's me. Mm-hmm. That's how I'm double. And, and I do it in one or two takes so we can move on. And you had the nerve to call yourself a princess. <laughs> that, ain't, that ain't princess <laughs> behavior. You out here doing your own stunts? Duncan, you haven't said a new job for the princess. She better get to work. Right. <laughs> I don't know what uh, Megan doing over there with Prince Harry. <laughs> but if she was a little darker, she'd be at work. <laughs> <laughs> so you 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 mentioned stand up is uh oh I did. You did. <laughs> and, and I and I can't believe it. You you're not funny at all. I don't know what you're talking about. Not even a little bit. Right. You know what I mean? I'm gonna steal from John Rivers, honey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't laughed not a single time in this episode. So I don't know how this part of your career is gonna go. Uh but best of luck. You know <laughs> and you know, thanks. I'm gonna work on it. I won't let you down, boo. <laughs> <laughs> so where where can people see you? Where when are you doing your first? Um, I'm going to I'm going to um actually um make it easy for it to all happen. I'm a I'm actually going to figure out a way to um bridge the two worlds of the comic cons and the comedy. And so I think what I, I have some things in plan to bring the two worlds together because when I go to these conventions and I don't see enough of my black nerds, I get challenged by that Mm -hmm. because I know we exist and I just think they don't know that I exist. So I think also too in the world, which is so funny because I've gone to conventions where people were staring at me and they're like, wait, why do I know you? Because they're not putting together the Bernie Mac show and this. So I want to try to find a way to bridge the two worlds because I'm not leaving either world. So now it's about trying to encompass the two. I owe in honor and out of uh, homage to Bernie and to Don Ruckles, because Don Ruckles is the one that actually put me on Bernie's radar, that he should actually assist me in growing this thing in me. And um, I just, I have to do it, I have to figure it out, how it works, how it flows. Um, I've been told not to say too much about it, because I know how certain people feel, especially stand-up comedians. Oh, you're coming over here, you're going to try to stand up and do some jokes? No, I'm coming up here to do some storage because, motherfucker, I need to be paid. Okay? <laughs> okay, thanks. Scoot over. Right. And, <laughs> just like on tank. <laughs> <laughs> and why not? I mean, it's you're not, clearly you're not busy enough. So <laughs> you need no, something. No, it's about we're, we're creators. Right. We're, we're, we're talent. So to box somebody on one thing, like it hurts me to see someone like a, a jasmine guy who was so brilliant at Whitley where you can't even move your mind from the fact that she's just a brilliant artist and she can come up with another something. Right. But they'll only see her as Whitley. And then they'll think, man, nah, she can't. Do- Are you kidding me? She came up with that. You don't think she can come up with something else? You don't think Jaleel White can come up with something else? He came up with that was so good, they tossed his career. Because they don't think you can do nothing else. How you hide the person that comes with the brilliant character got seven more than she the brilliant. Right, and, and and you bring up a good point. It's If this person was such a creative genius, why wouldn't we allow them to do all why of the things? Why wouldn't you see what else they got? they showing you they are they're so potent <laughs> with just 
Look at me. Just look at me. <laughs> I'm going to come up with something, I promise. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. So I say that to say is that it, 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 it challenges me sometimes about that. But we as, uh, I, I, if anything, I want to advocate, advocate that as creators, that's what we do. Just give us some information and let us do it. Let us, let us, let us see what we got. Don't tell us we're stuck in a spot just because you believe this so much. You don't think we can get out of it. Right. How about we hypnotize you? Don't be so seduced <laughs> that I'm hypnotized too. I'm not. Right. That's why I want to change the game and jump, fly over there to Kwame. Just to just shake it up. Go out. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, you know what? I, that's it. I'm no longer a guest at the Church of Kalita. I am becoming a member <laughs> now because you just keep giving these, you're giving us these words. You're giving us these moments. I love you. Oh, my God. My niece's social security number is. Oh, <laughs> Kalita, thank you so much for well, you're awesome. hanging thank out you. with me. Uh, I I didn't expect us to get these gems that you was dropping, but you gave them to us, and of course Aww. you did because you're brilliant. And why wouldn't we expect you to to be even more brilliant than we already know you to be? So thank you, uh, thank you, you for you that. Tell your mama, I said, you know what? That was a good feeding. She gave you that good old that good old similar. That was good. <laughs> So uh, we know we can find you on Sci-Fi, on Z Nation, and we can find you on In the Cut. And Inspire TV, because if they're doing that, they put Bernie Mac in syndication. Hey, I hear that. Yes, another check. That's what we like. <laughs> well, not even that. It's just another breath of being able to like not forget him. Yes, indeed. Yeah, and, and first of all, if, uh, not to be disrespectful to anybody in the union, but hey, it's not even a check of coins. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> coins. <laughs> Give to the needy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, hang up, bye. <laughs> oh, again, thank you so much. Uh, you guys, of course, thank you for listening. Make sure you check out Z Nation. Uh, before the season ends at the end of this year, but you can always catch up if you haven't already been watching. And uh, be on the lookout for Kalita's stand-up show at a Comic-Con near you. And, of course, thank you guys for listening. Or uh, improv. Yes. Or improv club near you. Yes. I'll make it easy to find me. Yes. Of course, I love you guys for listening to the show. If you love me back, do me a favor. Tell a friend about the show. Subscribe to the show. Tell Kalita to tell a friend about the show. Uh, oh, make sure Kalita already knows. Come on, show, show. Uh, and tell Kalita to set some of them coins aside from that Bernie Mac check so that... Uh, her, that first day where her needs can be paid for so we set for that <laughs> <laughs> there it is you got it guys uh, you guys can check out other episodes if this is your first episode on wherever you listen to podcasts and on the website com. and you can follow us on social media at pod. that's on twitter and Instagram, and of course, you can find me on those same places at Kent W. Johnson. Kalita! Oh, this yes, was... KG. Come on, KJ. <laughs> Come on, KJ. You know what? You just let me get your personal phone number and I'll send you a picture of my niece. Go uh, <laughs> and bet that up, Shawty. Bet that up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good talking to you. Thank you. Appreciate you. No problem. Talk to you soon. <laughs>